Hello, and welcome to this Bomb Portal training series presentation, where we are continuing to look at in depth the features and best practices of this application. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is the Bomb Portal. First off, we're going to define what the Bomb Portal is. Then we're going to be looking at some basic overview of the platform itself, and then why use the Bomb Portal. The Bomb Portal is a rather new application, already, but already it's having a significant impact on the, our industry. It has been described as a game changer, not just for PCB designers, but for many other areas and roles of the design process, especially, of course, the procurement area. It is the newest addition to the Altium 365 platform. So what is the Bomb Portal? It is an advanced tool for creating and managing bombs, listing various items for review, and then providing vital information for procurement purposes. The bomb portal structure uses several panels where you can clearly see all the vital information you need regarding your bomb. The first panel is the main view. We see the actual raw data from your PCB project and as it relates to the components that you have chosen from your library and the part choices that exist there. So this is basically the first view of your uh, bomb and looking at your manufacturer, your manufacturer life cycle, manufacturing part number and such, and all that vital information. The next panel, we begin to look at some of the details of that bomb, especially when it deals first off with pricing. So here you can actually set up either a, a, you can set up production metrics based on either a prototype or a production run. And you can see the cost and determine if it falls within the profit margin for your product. You can easily identify now those components that are out of the, of the that price range and maybe impacting the, the uh, increasing the price of your PCB design in some way. The next area is we look at the bomb coverage. Now this is identifying your vendors where you intend to buy the components from and you look at then how much of your bomb is actually covered by vendors and uh, how many of them are actually unprocured or, or not covered by a specific vendor. So it may be that you have a, a, uh, a one of your favorite vendors or a selection of let's say uh, Mauser or DigiKey, you can do that. You can easily set that up as your preferred vendor here. There's then also it's looking at the availability of those vendors and the stock uh, of the components and determining if you need to ident and need to make a change on any of the vendors or switch maybe from one to the other to provide for the you know to actually procure the components. The next uh, panel is the issues. Here, we actually begin to look at some of the problems that you may have in your bomb. So here you can actually see, first off, your manufacturing life cycle, uh, looking at those components that are not recommended for new designs, end of life, or maybe obsolete. Uh, these are situations uh, that often are co very common in a bomb. Since there is a constant change in the um, procurement side of per, you know, getting components, uh, it's very important to understand this day is information that will constantly be changing. First indicator that your component has an issue will be the first one there, not recommended for new designs. Then it will move into the end of life and will finally be obsoleted. So if you have a situation where the component is now going into not recommended for new designs, it is recommended to take action at that point. The next area is a rather new area. We, are, we do identify the components that are REACH or ROHAS non-compliant so that you can bring those into compliance with your design. Uh, we are looking at uh, adding in the future other compliance criteria and such. The next area is the supply chain. Here we look at the supply uh, part numbers. We see if they have an insufficient stock for your request of how many boards you're building. Uh, it also identifies those components that have no suppliers. Now, 
in this area, you would you probably would like to go back to your library and work with your components on that level. Uh, the no suppliers will actually be, uh, you want to develop a good part choice in the library. And that is uh, probably a prerequisite here uh, uh, of using the bomb portal is to have a very strong library, a library that has good part choices and alternates that are available for each of those components. The next area is your bomb data. This will actually identify any duplicate designators and many other problems that might happen uh, with your bomb. Uh, missing information as, of course, things like this. Now, the overshoot area is very interesting because what, what can now be done because you have a consolidated data in your library and you're using that, you can actually identify those components that are outside of the time period for your factory lead time. The bomb portal will actually then identify those components that are outside of that criteria. The next panel is the release area. So through the bomb portal, you're actually able to release and manage your bombs very, very easily. And here you're actually able to either download them or change the life state or revert to the release. But most of all, you're able to compare bombs. And this is really, really nice because what happens now is you are able to compare bombs to verify if the, all the changes have occurred or if they are correct. This is probably one of the most exciting uh, panels in the bomb portal. Uh, it, it provides all in a single location some vital information for everyone to work from. First off, you have a bomb health monitor, which actually looks at your... Uh, the health of your bomb based on manufacturability, procurability, and compliance. And as you can see, there's some issues with this bomb. But as uh, I would go through, I can actually identify what items are at risk for my manufacturability, my procurability, and then my compliance. And I can then fix those issues in my design, in my bomb basically improving my bomb to the level where it, it will be much more beneficial to the overall production. Because understand, these are things that will delay the process or delay the production of your board. So this is the uh, situation in most of our designs that we do is that not having clear information on this side of it where it's in the back end it's, it's very easy, for example, to put a particular component on a design, but then as you're getting, the main problem is procuring that component, that becomes another story. So this is actually a very important thing to see uh, in a clear, precise way exactly the weak areas of your bomb. There's also then the manufacturability. Uh, this year, we look at the life cycles of each of these components, determining if number one, is this a, a component that will be around for, for a considerable amount of time? Not just, you don't wanna just look at the, maybe the prototype run that you are running or building, but rather also then if you can run this product maybe a year down the road. So this actually will look, down, uh, look at your life cycle, determine uh, what that is, uh, what is the active uh, situations on each of the components you've got? There's also alternatives coverage. This What this does is it looks at alternates that you may have chosen and looks at see if there's any options there as replacements for the uh, issues that you might have in your manufacturability. There's also then supply chain. And what this does is looks at your procuring of your components of exactly who you will be going to. Uh, this will look at identifying who you intend to buy these parts from. Uh, and then it will also look to see if you've got any unprocured or anyone, anything that is, is uh, not covered by a vendor. Uh, then it's, it's also then the looking at those vendors and looking at their availability. So as you can see, we have two insufficient stock here. Those are different situations that would I would want to look at. Now, keep in mind, this is also based on the, uh, the number of boards that you wish to run, the quantity of components that you intend to purchase. Of course, it will change your price break uh, on, the, on those components and, and then also change the pricing as we saw on the previous panel. Now, down here, we see the compliance issues. 
we see that the complete breakdown of those, compo those components that are both Ro Rojas and Reach, and as I said earlier, there will be additional compliances that are done here. And uh, the most exciting uh, part of this panel for me is the factory lead time. This actually breaks down your components and determines the amount of time that you'll need to purchase all your components. Uh, this is uh, it's really vital information. If it's, uh, it, you can set this to be, have a set date on this, and this is then where you determine that sourcing overshoot that we saw earlier. Uh, this actually allows you now to de identify the components that will take longer and uh, will maybe a problem for your your t your uh, schedule. So why should we use the bomb portal? It's first off, it allows you faster bomb completion with enriched supply chain data. So you can actually leverage enriched part and supply chain data for better informed bomb decisions. And by bringing in early collaboration between the engineering and the procurement teams, it ensures that the latest part specifications, compliance information, and supply chain data, like manufacturing lifecycle, availability, and pricing are considered. This helps to accelerate your product's time to market without compromising on quality or efficiency. Another reason is data-driven supply chain risk mitigation. Bomb Portal ensures the stability of your supply chain and sustain your designs already in production. It, any supply chain fluctuations can affect part availability and costs, as we all know. You will now always be one step ahead as Bomb Portal will proactively track your part supply chain and provides warnings and errors based on an up-to-date supply chain information. The third reason is spreadsheet simplicity and powerful functionality. With the bomb portal, you can ma manage and edit your bombs with the ease of a spreadsheet and the robustness of an advanced document control system. You can keep data organized with archives, folders, and confidently and securely share with both internal and external stakeholders. You can also create and store bomb releases as separate revisions with customizable lifecycle uh, states. And you can simplify your bomb management while utilizing the benefits of enhanced functionality. The last reason why you should consider using the bomb portal is comprehensive part library and traceability. Finally, with the bomb portal, you're able to improve your part management with a comprehensive component library that fosters reusability and traceability. You are able to create and edit library components from your bomb items and adopt part choices. You can also take advantage of many proactive reporting on bomb and library health and utilize where used tracking. An additional advantage is if you're working together with your ECAD team on Altium 365, you can get access to the same library as the designers so they can now track down components to the exact project where they are used. So there are four reasons why you should consider using the bomb portal. For your next step, I would challenge you, encourage you to go to the bomb portal location there and try this for yourself.